today relive your childhood and watch us spend 100 days on pixelmon this is our first ever time playing pixelmon and we actually completed so much stuff for example we caught the iconic charizard and we even got the best pokemon in the game the rayquaza so if you think you can beat us in a pokemon battle which i highly doubt you can come join the server on pixelmon realms everything you need to know will be in the description below and if you subscribe right now we can hit 1 million subscribers in only four videos uploaded so please subscribe like the video and hope you guys enjoy for my first pokemon i really want to get the monkey but my friend took him so i had to take the next ugliest pokemon so i took the rowlet and once i logged in i just saw some dude flying on the pterodactyl it was pretty cool and if you want to meet my friend this is his very first introduction we then threw our boots on and we went on our adventure oh yeah Oh yeah, let's go. Let's go on out. And if you couldn't tell already, we were both pretty excited to start playing this server. Drop that one. Here you go. Dude, that's a good one. You don't need the purple one. Since I don't know a clue about Pokemon, he actually convinced me to drop the Master Ball. And then he logged out on me. Then he pretended to throw it away, but he actually threw it up in the air. And now it was up for grabs. And I luckily caught it back. Thank God, because he would have kept it. Using Slash RTP, which teleports you to a random place, we teleport on top of this mountain. And we spent a couple of days just finding out what to do and how to play. What is that? Yo, you see that freaking airplane, the seagull? I'm gonna catch it. I'm gonna throw a master ball at it. Then we found our very first Pokeball, and when you right click it, you get a random item. So it's basically like gambling. Then I found a rock that kept running his head into the wall. I'm not sure why. Then we saw this super weird looking Pokemon on the side of the mountain. So we bridged to him to check him oh, out. Oh, it grew an arm. He's waving at me. Once we got on top of the hill, we found this little house, and we tried stealing some things, but it was already claimed, sadly. Then my friend Carlos got into his first ever Pokemon battle, and he got clapped. So he started hitting it with a shovel and throwing snowballs at it. And once we realized we could throw snowballs at Pokemon, that's basically what we did all night. We just threw snowballs at random things. Then, you know me, I had to try breezily bridging at least once. And the entire night, we could not find any trees anywhere. So I did slash RTP again, and it brought me to a desert. And with every new bomb, you get new Pokemon that spawn. And I found this little tanning bed that actually clapped me. So I really need to start upgrading my Pokemon soon. And then we finally found trees. So we were fighting over the same ones. And I tried to annoy my friend so this is what he had to say to me so ugly he called me ugly and that kind of hurt so let me know in the comments if you guys can relate to because i can definitely relate to what he called me but anyways from day six to ten it could have been day six to nine that would have been perfect but it wasn't i went mining because i found a cool ravine and i found some random ores i've never seen before after we met up again we found this ultra ball and he got a little stick and um yeah and we went around just touching a whole bunch of balls then we made a boat and crossed the ocean and then our boat randomly disappeared. What? Hello? Where'd our boat go? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Yeah, our boat randomly disappeared, but we had to make another one. And we rode the boat until we found some new land. I then found this apricorn tree and like, I didn't know you could right click it to take the apricorns. So I accidentally just broke it and got logs. Yeah, don't make fun of me. I finally figured out that if you go to the Poke Center at spawn, you can actually repair or heal up your Pokemon for free of charge, which was awesome. I did slash RTP again and it brought me to this dude just AFK. I'm not sure what he was doing, but he was just in an AFK pool and like there was nothing around him so we tried waking him up we tried punching him a little bit and he actually did not wake up after messing with him some more he actually did end up realizing that we were messing with him and he caught us freaks in the chat what a kind kind person and the entire night of day 11 we just ran around collecting all these balls and while we were exploring, we found some name tags in the ground and we went to check it out. And we actually ended up finding these really cool houses built into the mountains. So we decided to check it out and kind of raid it a little bit. We didn't break anything yet. Keyword is yet. But I finally caught up to this one person that was running away and I said hi and I asked if they have any spare change. Then we noticed that they have an unclaimed leaf house. So we actually ended up claiming it. Okay, okay, right okay, in the middle okay, okay. okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right we actually took over this guy's house and we told them to stay five meters from our property <laughs> but here's just a twist the person who owned these houses are admins and yeah we uh claimed over an uh, admin's house and we renamed the leaf house to cookie and carlos's house <laughs> it was not a good look for us but i decided to explore the admin's house a little bit and it was actually pretty nice and then the admins made a deal with me they said they will build me an entire house if we unclaim their leaf house and move away from 
from them. So we had to take all our items back and move out of our leaf house. And Carlos changed the sign. He changed it to previously owned by Carlos and a cookie god. The 633 to 639. Then I did slash RTP again. And this amazing command always takes me to the best places. It spawned me on top of these mountains. And I asked the animus to build my house on top of these mountains. We also picked up another homeless guy off the street to play with us. So now we have three people. And he dueled me and he actually destroyed my Pokemon with his Charmander. How did you even get a Charmander to start? What? And then we decided to have a little fun and throw Pokeballs across this huge gap in the mountains. While we wait for the admins to build our house. Look at this admin just making our house for us. Thank God he was because I was way too late to make ourselves a house. And then my friend asked if he would die if he jumped off the cliff. So he ended up jumping and he died, obviously. So while the admin was building our house, we decided to go explore a little bit. And I actually collected my first ever level 40 Pokemon. And I actually got our first try with a regular Pokeball. So I got pretty lucky. His name was Meganium. Meganium, I have no idea how to pronounce it, but he was level 48 and he was much better than my level 10 Rowlet. I then ran into this super cool white looking Pokemon and I wanted to catch it so bad. I threw some great balls at it and some regular Pokeballs at it, but he would not get into my balls. So I ended up getting frustrated and ran away. I then walked into a cave and just continued mining because I knew we needed some iron to make those iron plates or whatever for those Pokeballs. And once I got back home, the house was almost complete. It was looking pretty awesome. I'm so happy we claimed that leaf house from those admins. And they were probably worried that we would do something bad. So there were just three staff just chilling around us watching us. And this guy's skin was a McDonald's worker. So I typed in chat, I want to make double and large fries. And he ended up throwing me a cookie instead. But you know, I'm the cookie god, so I'm fine with that. We talk about how awesome McDonald's fries are in the comments because they are so good. And he actually gave us bunk beds. What do you guys prefer? Tell me in the comments because I prefer the bottom bed. He also hooked us up with an inventory for Pokemon and a healer. And it was very convenient just having it around the house. Then the homeless guy that we picked up off the street named Ametis, he dueled me again. And with his Charmander, he again clapped my Rowlet. But then I put down my level 40 A Magnum and he was a tank. Like look at this damage he done to me. <laughs> he did a little sliver of damage. I then used Taco on the Charmander and I insta killed him. Yep, who is the king? now i then noticed this cool little ring on this adamant and i knew i had to get one before this video ends because it just looked so cool and on day 21 we started making the apricorn farm and we waited all the way until sunrise to watch them grow on day 23, we started to make those iron plates so we can start making some Pokeballs. And while I was working hard, these two goon heads were making armor. And I put it on and they just started laughing at me because I looked so stupid with it on. On the morning of day 23, I finally collected the apricorns because I was so impatient. It was taking way too long, so I ran around just collecting even more apricorns all around the world. I ran into a big apricorn farm owned by somebody else and I was praying it wasn't claimed so I could just take them all. But obviously it was claimed and my heart was broken because like, look at it. it just there sitting there as i was running around i ran into a big eagle somebody made and it was pretty cool the community here is pretty awesome while i was running around the forest i found a big reindeer so i decided to steal him only because he was level 44 he did not look cool at all but i knew i needed to upgrade my pokemon so i had to catch him since i have a whole bunch of more apricorns i decided to spend day 28 to 30 expanding our apricorn farm and making it look way better than it was and my friend amanda somehow got a pikachu the best pokemon in the game how did he even get him? But while I was building the apricorn farm, I found this huge, big, big, I can't talk, but I found this massive buffalo with huge horns. So I really wanted to take him, but my pokeballs are going right through him. I'm not sure if my aim would just poo. I could not catch him. And then I managed to try dueling him and his Pikachu got slapped. And just in case you miss my friend, here's his voice. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't ask me. I don't know why he makes those noises, but he does. And <laughs> it's just not something you question anymore. That's just what he does. And on day 31, I realized you can actually ride your Pokemons. And my boy Ametis dueled me one more time thinking his Pikachu would beat my Meganum. And guess what? My Meganum clapped his Charmander again. And I also clapped his Pikachu. Come on now, don't underestimate my boy Meganum. He's the best Pokemon in the game. Mewtwo is not even existent anymore. It's my boy Meganum. But then I spent the next couple of days just fighting some Pokemon so I can try leveling up my Meganum because he's my favorite Pokemon now. So I just went around fighting everything I can find and my Meganum was just one hitting every single Pokemon I fought. 
And then my friend Ametis came back in a hot air balloon. He brought him back up. He was ready to fight me one more time. I was jealous on how he could fly around. So I tried throwing some Pokeballs at these flying Pokemons, hoping I can catch a Pokemon that could fly. But I ended up killing this Golbat and I couldn't tame him. And I feel like I couldn't even ride him anyways because the Golbat is just so small and I weigh like 400 pounds. And my friend just loves making weird noises. Yeah, now that is a true monkey right there. And he's just so annoying that he stole the plates that Ametis gave me and he just logged. Oh, yay! Peace. <laughs> As my friend was trying to make the plates with the anvil, I kept bothering him and we kept getting in his way so he got mad and he took the anvil with him and jumped off the cliff. I'm not sure why he loved jumping off the cliff so much, but I guess we do too because we have so many death beacons everywhere. I've just died so many times around this place. I then found a Meowth and I thought it would evolve into a Mewtwo, but my friend told me it doesn't and I just ended up killing it. But as we were running around trying to find some Pokemon to kill to level up our own Pokemon, we found this nice little house and we went to raid it. But obviously there's nothing in it and we didn't take anything, but someone did leave a sign saying he should claim his place before someone steals all his items. What a nice guy. Then we found another house with another portal and I was pretty excited. <laughs> yeah, I guess my friend isn't the only monkey around here because I make monkey noises too sometimes. But the nether portal didn't work, so we just spent the next day just killing a whole bunch of Pokemon to try to level up our own Pokemon. I then found this really cool lion tiger looking guy, Boltund. He has some cool stripes and he was yellow, so I tried so hard getting him, but he kept breaking out of my balls. So I ran away again and I ran into this duo do or uh, he had two heads, so I thought it looked pretty cool. And a menace came back with a crazy Pokemon I didn't even know existed. This is just a floating sword. And there was this cool Pokemon carrying a leaf. So the only Pokemon it had was an Abra. And the only move he had was teleport. What a scam Pokemon. And while my friend was organizing the chests, I asked him this. Hey, do you want a present? Yeah. And I threw him a whole bunch of random junk. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, look at that. There's a fighting monkey over there. Oh, I want the monkey. Mine, 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 mine. Yeah, so we found a monkey chilling outside our base and we were fighting over the monkey because we both love our monkeys because we're related to them. I ended up beating my friend to the monkey and I actually caught him with a great ball. Let's go. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Give me the monkey. <laughs> so my friend started punching the monkey and my monkey started fighting back the monkey gave my friend a quick one two punch and made my friend run away then we found a level 69 a perfect number so we tried fighting him just for jokes and he completely destroyed us i then decided to go explore the spawn a little bit and i found a marketplace and there's a lot of pokeballs in pokemon i didn't even know i thought they're just regular red ones and like master balls then we found out slash warp altar and it brought us to a super cool place i also found these shrines around and i think that's for somebody who's sweatier than i am then this guy starts spawning in like a demon or something and i start throwing my pokeballs at it trying to collect the pokemon and then my friend stole them all oh free pokeballs Yoink. and someone had the same exact idea and threw an ultra ball at it now i have a free ultra ball thanks whoever threw it and we finally found out there's a slash warp ev training and this was so helpful it's just a room full of level one pokemon this is gonna save us so much time instead of running around trying to find pokemon to fight and i also hired my friend vtech martin and i had to bring him in to help me with this video because i have no idea what i'm doing and i really need some help from a pokemon god so he told me to go exploring to find some new pokemon and to try to get some ivs that are at least iv 31 after about nine days of searching i finally found an iv 31 for speed i then spent day 61 just collecting a whole bunch of apricorns and apricots to make a bigger farm and just in case you're missing my friend's voice here you go Bless you. Everybody just make fun of him in the comments so he feels bad. I took all the apricorns and then I smelted them so I can start making some ultra balls to collect even more Pokemon. And this took around three days just waiting for everything to smelt. And we just spent the whole three days waiting for it to smelt running around the base. I then made my diamond Thor hammer and I was ready to get working. And I can't even imagine who does this every single day. It takes so long. It took like 30 minutes of work just to make 40 ultra balls. And after collecting a whole bunch of Pokemon, we are ready to go fight the boss. My boy the mcdonald's worker and could we just take a moment to talk about his nose forget a villager oh my god then i finally got in a battle and every single pokemon i put out was getting clapped we thought we could have had a chance but there was literally no way i could beat a single
single Pokemon. I couldn't even get the first gym to half a heart. We'll meet again, ugly McDonald's man. He smelled like fries and mayonnaise sauce anyways. So day 67 to day 69, we went exploring for more Pokemon. It was day 70, but 69 is a funny number. We then traded all our Pokemon, so I get the best Pokemon, and we went back to the rock gym, and we had to fight him one more time, since I had a full party and full lineup this time. And we're just idiots, and we didn't heal up our double before we started, so we started with 8 HP, and we still got clapped by this weird looking plant thing. <laughs> I have no idea what it is, but it made us sad that we were getting clapped at the first gym, and we couldn't even beat it at all. Like, we couldn't kill a single one. Like, our entire life led up to this moment. We collected a whole bunch of Pokemon. We went exploring for hours, and we just get one tapped by every single Pokemon this McDonald's worker has. How disappointing. Then we went exploring one more time for more Pokemon, and I found this crazy temple on top of this mountain. It reminded me of Kung Fu Panda, where uh, Master Shifu lived. You guys remember this, you know? Like, Master Ugwe, like, my time has come. No, okay, never mind. I guess no one knows what I'm talking about. Let me know in the comments you guys do. Because if you do, we could actually be, like, best friends. I'm not even kidding. If you guys want a 200 days, let me know in the comments because it would be really cool building an entire city. Or I guess it's like a town. I don't know. I don't know any freaking geometry. But anyways, on day 71 to 73, I just went mining for some materials all day and all night so I can expand the apricot farm because I was sick of getting Pokemon all day. So I want to do some building. Sadly, I didn't have any leaves to spice up the building like what I always use, but this is what I ended up with. Then my friend VTech was telling me to get home quick, and his ice cream cone evolved into a two-headed ice cream cone. The very next day, we found a massive cleftable just chilling like right outside our base. I keep saying cleftable, it's clefable, but it's just fun saying cleftable, you know, never mind. But we threw a whole bunch of ultra balls trying to get it because he was massive. He reminded me of my actual size in real life. And we finally ended up catching him with a regular Pokeball. We ran a couple blocks later and we found a shiny Hitmonchan, another fighting monkey, and he was shiny, and we actually caught him. Let's go. We got our first shiny of the video. I then got too confident with my new Pokemon, so I challenged a random player, and he had an Articuno, and he just completely destroyed me. But this is when it starts getting crazy in the video. We had Absol just spawn right in front of our base. Like he's in our base, and he looked so cool. He was a boss. So I tried fighting him for jokes, and he was level 69, which was even better, but he obviously destroyed me, but it was fun fighting my first ever boss. And it gets even crazier. We found even more bosses and more giant Pokemon all around our base. We found my very first Charizard and it looked so cool just seeing him in the distance. And I tried fighting his Aerodactyl and he clapped me but it was all good because it was just so cool seeing him. Then a couple minutes later we actually found a legendary or a shiny Charizard that was black. I have no idea what it, if it's a shiny or a legendary. I have no idea. But he was black and he looked so cool. And I just knew I needed to capture him because he was a Charizard. Look at him. And he tried flying away from me. So I threw another Ultra Ball at it and he broke out again. I threw another one and I captured him. I got my first ever shiny. Let's go. And everyone in chat was just saying GG to me and it was pretty cool. I felt like I was popular for once. And I had to say goodbye to the original and giant Charizard that was flying away from me. He didn't want me to capture him. And the second I got home, Ametis challenged me to a duel and I already had so much faith in my Charizard and I completely destroyed his Pokemon. I finally won a battle. And we looked outside and we found another boss. Like, they're just chilling everywhere i don't even want to try to pronounce this guy's name because it's just way too hard but he just destroyed me too and at least i don't look as bad as this boss because he just looks disgusting but it was my new best friend charizard i went around the entire world just killing every single pokemon i can find and i ran into a raikou oh my god so i gave my friend the master ball because he was the one that actually summoned it and my friend collected him up let's go we got another awesome pokemon now we have a charizard and a raikou i think we might have a chance to actually beat the first rock gym and with the raikou my friend was trying to pull in some ladies at the spawn and he was doing a pretty good job until she got unimpressed and ran away <laughs> and as we were trading some pokemon the bulldog evolved and he turned into some mr krabs looking kind of guy he doesn't look anything like mr krabs but that was the first thing that came in my head and i had to challenge my friend one more time with the raikou because i just love beating him and it's so much fun if you guys want to try it out join the server all the information is in the description below and come collect some pokemon and ruin your friendships i then used a slash wonder trade command to trade a random pokemon for a random one in return 
hoping I would get like, like a Rayquaza or something. But I got this ugly guy. <laughs> He's just a big bug. And then I voted for the server to get free money and a free vote key in hopes to get some rare candies to level up a Pokemon to beat that ugly McDonald's worker at the first gym. So after voting for like 30 seconds, I did slash warp crates and I started gambling and I got the rare candies I wanted. I got three. I then got some quick balls. I got another three rare candies and I got end crystals. I have no idea what the end crystals do, but we just sold them for money. And then my friend helped me change all the moves for all my Pokemon. So we were ready to beat the first gym. And then we ran to another shiny called a car call, a Carl, a Carlito. I'm not sure, but I wanted to capture him just because his name was yellow. And I ended up capturing him in about three tries. I just wanted a full shiny like lineup. And then I looked up and I found a boss, a Sparrow. He was green and he looked pretty cool. So I tried throwing my balls at it and I kept missing. But the third time's a charm and I finally caught him. And I completely destroyed him with my Charizard, man. I love this guy so much. And to be completely ready for the gym battle, I went to the EV training again and tried leveling up the EVs for my Cleft Able. And then one of my leaf Pokemons turned into a bigger leaf Pokemon. I don't even remember his name. His name is Victory Bell. Uh, I don't know, but he is kind of ugly. Look at his eyes. And even bosses spawn in the EV training, which is awesome. So I started fighting this boss and he actually kind of destroyed me. I did not expect that, but having them spawn in the EV trainings must level up your Pokemon a ton. So this was an awesome feature to have. Only if you can kill him, that is, because I didn't even kill him with six Pokemon. And I almost killed him, but he was at like a quarter of a health. It's probably because I don't know like which move to use. So I healed up my Pokemon again and fought him, and then I killed him. Let's go. I just click random moves, man. I don't even know what I'm doing. But after EV training on day 90, we were back. For my hold up, hold up. Before we do this, go to spawn. I, I guess we're not back. After we changed the moves around at spawn and we were all prepared, we went right into battle. We actually had a chance this time. The trainer kept switching on his Pokemon, and we actually ended up doing a ton of damage to their Pokemon. We almost killed their Aerodactyl, and we almost killed their Cradley, and then he spawned in this giant T-Rex. Like, what, what, what the hell is this? This isn't even considered a Pokemon, is it? This is from the Jurassic World. What the hell? <laughs> And then he slapped me with his tail and he insta killed on mine shoe and I I, I I admit defeat he defeated me and I thought it was time to quit but in good news there was a boss outside the base so I fought it and I actually ended up killing him and killing the boss gave me a keystone to choose from and I was gonna choose the wristband but I had to go with the shades and <laughs> look at look how stupid I look and like look at me look, look at me like my head is so big and to match with the MLG shades I had to make some rocket armor and I look pretty Pretty stupid actually <laughs> and just take a look at all these death beacons man we get so stressed playing we just jump off the cliff every time and there's at least like 10 in there and the owner actually came on to give us a gift and i started twerking on him <laughs> oh my god is that really phantom oh my god oh my god yeah we were pretty excited to see him but i opened the shulker box and the chests and he hooked us up with a crazy present he gave us like 10 stacks of rare candies so many stacks of tokens a stack of master balls and even 10 overkill keys i I then checked my Pokemons and he gave us crazy Pokemons, all level 100s, and he even gave me a level 100 Rayquaza. So I quickly removed my entire lineup and I brought in the new refresh. Let's go. And then I gave away my poopy armor to a random e girl at spawn. I hope you enjoyed the junk. Then we spent day 92 just upgrading all the moves and all the Pokemon that I got. And here's a showcase of all my Pokemons. I got the Raikou, the Charizard, the monkey looking guy, and even this black Mamba. And this is a custom skin that the server gave me. He looks so sick and so cold. Reminds me a little bit about Kobe Bryant. Let's get a rip Kobe in the comments real quick. But anyways, you know I had to make the Rayquaza the biggest size ever. So I made him a ginormous. I put him down and he just <laughs> massive. Oh my, he looks so cool. And then I gave him a kiss on the cheek. But this is what he looks like. He looks so sick in black too. Then I turned on one of his moves and turned him into a mega. And just look at him. He looks even better now. Jeez. Only took me uh, 92 days to get this. No problem. Just found him in the wild. And I jumped on his back and started riding him. And it felt like I was in a How to Train Your Dragon movie. I went from a level 40 Meganum to a level 100 ginormous Rayquaza. I then right clicked all the tokens he gave me. So it goes into my inventory and my balance. I then took all my rare candy and start leveling up my pokemon so i'll be ready to defeat the first ever gym which is kind of sad to say to be honest from day 95 to 98 i decided to start opening my crate
crates. I had 10 overkill keys and I was so ready. I'm pretty sure each one of these crate keys are like 20 bucks. So I was expecting something awesome, but wow, I was not expecting so much good stuff. Each crate I opened gave me even more keys to open more crates and it got even more stuff. I ended up getting this winter wonder pickaxe, which is a 1.6% unbreaking 50 and efficiency 15. That is pretty crazy. And as I opened more and more crates, I got more and more keys and it was pretty crazy. The entire server's chat was just going nuts because the entire chat was being filled with me opening crates for like 20 minutes. They kept sitting in chat like, did this dude spend his entire rent money on keys? But I did end up getting a random legend and I got the Curium, I think it's called. And bro, he just so sick. And I'm just going to fast forward all of this crate opening stuff because I'm sure you guys don't want to see me opening a whole bunch of stuff for like 10 minutes. But I did get another random and I got a Victini and he looked like an upgraded like 2024 version of a pikachu and then i got one more random legend in the christmas crates and i got the best pokemon ever the marshadow just because he's so small <laughs> look how cute he is i thought he would be ginormous but he's so puny then i got one more random legend and this is probably the most iconic pokemon ever i remember this pokemon as a kid i got the lugia i remember my cousins when i was like 10 years old always talking about the lugia i then got another random legend but this one was shiny and he was even smaller so i just started working on him i'm not sure why <laughs> but fast forwarding all of this opening stuff i typed in chat the first person who types subscribe to a cookie god will get a free overkill key and overkill key is around twenty dollars so this guy said it and i gave it to him and i felt so bad because everybody in chat was flaming him because they got beat and they couldn't get the key from me but then he opened it and he got two more overkill keys he just duplicated them i swear these are so worth it and i have one more key left so i opened it hoping i'll get something crazy but i got 1500 tokens that is so amazing then on day 99 i used all my rare candies to upgrade the new pokemon i got and then i checked my ender chest and <laughs> they completely completely filled my ender chest with more tokens. I checked all my Pokemon's IVs and they were all at 31, so I was ready to get my revenge on the first gym, the ugly McDonald's boy. My Greninja and the Cradley were in an intense battle. I did some damage to him and then Cradley did way more damage back to me and he ended up killing me somehow. I then sent out my Kyurum to try to get my revenge on the Cradley, but then they switched out and I actually ended up killing the next Pokemon. Ronald McDonald then sent out his Aerodactyl, but I ended up killing him because he was no match for my Pokemon. I then sent out the big boy, the Rayquaza, I put him on Mega Evolution and killed this ugly Pokemon. Then he spawned in the T-Rex with his butt facing me and I just completely wiped him out. Then Ronald McDonald's Tyranitar wiped out my Rayquaza. Luckily for me, I had two Pokemon left. I used Drain Punch and I killed the last Pokemon. And I won the gym battle. Let's go. It only took me 100 days to beat Ronald McDonald himself. His big nose was no match for my big ego. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching this video. If you guys want to play Pixelmon, everything will be in the description below. The server is Pixelmon Realms. And I had so much fun playing. If you guys are new here, please subscribe. And I'll see you guys on day 300 on One Block Minecraft. Thank you.